there and when you re we hear this analogy all the time when you remove people from their history um you're removing the roots from the from the tree yeah that's a great analogy it is a, it's a wonderful analogy um but there is a, a a type of plant not really a plant but type of plant-based organism that doesn't have roots that can sprout anywhere and that's a fungus or fungi so do, what i say to that is okay <laughs> So if we can't be trees and plants no more because they done ripped our roots up. We're going to be fun guy because we're going to exist some way, somehow. Huh? Right, right. Yeah. We need yeah. to, we need, but for that to happen, every group has to be a self-contained unit because a fun guy can sprout anywhere. And 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 if if cultivated correctly, fun guy can become a force in the, in the, in the area that it's in. It could be either good or bad absolutely and so what we see now with our culture stripped of its roots is that it is becoming a fun guy negatively what's going on family i'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book on the shoulders of giants volume 4 of the caribbean by visiting my website www.ontheshoulders1.com and help support me as i continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information even though you know there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history but hey we can teach ourselves and one of the tools we can use is my new book on the shoulders of giants volume 4 the caribbean remember visit my website www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy and i appreciate your support what up my people what's going down what it is it's joseph water patrick urban back here on this on the show the giants youtube channel you know how we do when you when us two linking up that means we're giving you a breakdown um once again thank you to everybody who's been supporting this channel all my day one people everybody who down with me who 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 just supporting this this growth of this channel i surely appreciate you all y'all just don't understand i've been grinding hard for a long time and it's it's growing and it's 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 helping me be able to do more things with this channel and with my people in my community so i appreciate everybody and all the support i do appreciate pat for rocking with me and everybody who's been guest on this channel uh everybody who i had a chance to interview everybody who watched the video share the video comment whether it was a good comment bad comment to help the algorithm so shout out to everybody um we back again i hope you all have enjoyed the breakdowns that we've been giving you all so we're back again with another breakdown uh last week we did dr joy the grew so this week we're going more into the historical lane but this historical lane has some curves and that goes back into everything else that we've been discussing over the last few weeks with these breakdowns what's good my man pat what's good my brother I ain't nothing man you know having some some technological difficulties but you know we're gonna keep it moving hey man we ain't gonna let the white man's technology slow us down my brother <laughs> word <laughs> hey man so this week we're breaking down historian robin walker uh robin walker is a uh, london-based historian and he has a great book uh when we rule you know i got it this is his book when we when we ruled so it's a thick book it's a good book make sure you check it out go get it it's on amazon it's, it's on this website google the uh professor what well, not professor but the historian robin walker google him you know i already know i had his book so we're breaking down robin walker why is black history hidden you got that look on your face like you ready to go let's do this history of african peoples been erased well, we don't live in a fair world. Things aren't fair. You don't get equal opportunities. You get the opportunities that you create for yourself. And if someone gets in there first and they conquer you, they colonize you, they enslave you, they simply make your history disappear to make it look like they conquered, colonized and enslaved nobodies. We can go ahead and start right there because <laughs> he just he just went knee deep in the beginning. I mean, I I think I love that. I love that he said that. I love that he said that because we need a wake up call today. 
I believe our people need to wake up call because we are too far on this moral, this moral road that we've been going on for, for all these decades, trying to appeal to the moral sensibility of the people who conquered us. And they didn't conquer us through morals. They conquered us through, through force. They mm -hmm. took what they wanted. And that's what he's saying. If you want freedom, you want your history, you want your dignity, you want to be recognized as a person, you got to take something. Nobody's going to give you something because you're begging for it. And we've been in this position of begging people for what we wanted for the longest. We still do it all the time. We're always complaining about everything instead of taking what we want. But one of the main reasons why we can't take what we want is we haven't taken the time to organize and come together as a unit to be able to put ourselves in the position to be even take anything that we want. Everybody pushes us around, which is a damn travesty. Yeah, and I, I think to go to, to 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 specifically to what he said, you got to understand the psychology of what's going on. Um, human beings have a, 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 a natural desire for power and control. And yep. as a group, as a species, because we are social by nature, all of us, um, it, that that social nature of ours kind of gets in the way of seeing other human beings be dominated and controlled. The way that that's controlled for in history and even in current day is to dehumanize people, yep. to make them seem less than. That allows the brain, the fair moral part of the brain that you keep trying to appeal to, it allows that part of the brain to shut off. Yep, and it allows them to do all kinds of things that they wouldn't be able to do to their own children, mothers, brothers, or anybody they see as equal to them. So when you see somebody being unjust to somebody else, or you see somebody uh, mistreating or abusing somebody else, you're not looking at somebody that is doing something negative to somebody that they see is an equal, right? You know what I'm saying? You're looking hey. at somebody that is treating somebody the way that they feel they deserve to be treated because they are beneath them. They are not they, their equal. They've 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 socialized you and dominated you into being the inferior group. Right. The propaganda the propaganda campaign is important throughout um through all type of warfare, propaganda happens. And propaganda happens to do just what you just said, to dehumanize the enemies. Because it's hard for people to dominate and control and just mutilate people who they see as people. So mm -hmm. through, the, through the propaganda campaigns that are put out, this allows the brain to be switched to the mode of these people are less than us. So, so mm -hmm. since these people are less than us, it's okay for us to eradicate these people. It's okay for us to dominate these people. Now, the problem is us on the bottom with the inferiority complex. What we are believing is we 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 brought into the propaganda. So since we brought right. into the propaganda, we don't understand that we can't. We too can be powerful. We don't understand our power. We don't understand our power as a group and we don't understand our power as individuals. Now, there are small numbers of us that do, but not enough of us understand our power as groups and individuals. So therefore, we don't think that we can take what we need. Matter of fact, we can't take what we need because we're too fractioned to take what we need right now. So we continue to beg, but begging will never get you anywhere. Begging makes you look even more weak and make people treat you even more weak. And that's why nobody respects black people in America. And that is exactly where, because it, 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 it's two ways, right? Like on one side, they dehumanize you so they don't feel like you're their equal, so they can mistreat you and abuse you. On the other side, you buy in, like you said, see them as superior, so you don't feel like you can treat them the same way they treat you. You feel like you can reason with them, and hence you're now programmed to try to beg them to view you as equal to them instead of, instead of taking the steps necessary to acquire your own power. So it, it, it works on two fronts, and that's the brilliance and the genius of 
what we're up against is that the things that empower them also maintain and continue to ensure the maintenance of their power and control because it keeps us as viewing ourselves as what we need to be viewed as and it keeps us from viewing them as what they need to be viewed as so it's really a, a, a brilliant right. beautiful thing right no no matter what it might not be blatant now today but there's still an underlining uh force that is preventing the self-actualization of black people but in addition to that the way we've been socialized to behave we're also preventing our own self-actualization so let's get back into it colonized and enslaved nobodies when people have a history that makes you a somebody so if you remove the history you become a nobody and so your history disappearing nobody's lamenting the loss of that history that's why conquerors colonizers and enslavers make the people whose history they've conquered colonized and enslaved disappear there are psychological reasons why people would want to associate themselves with a history there is a oh, before we get into that because it just further you know um stamping what we're talking about removing the history of a people because that's that's even deeper than the propaganda campaign that's an actual mm -hmm. deeper step into the propaganda campaign to actually conquer the people and then remove the people remove the history of the people when you remove the history of the people you break them from their lineage you break them from from knowing who they are from knowing where their humanity comes from and therefore you can shape their humanity the way you want to shape it you can tell them what you want to tell them hence what we have here today um you know there I, i've been watching videos of um judge joe brown and uh the real dana shout out to them too and they've been having uh debates about whether black people have culture or not. and you know we've had those conversations so we don't really mm -hmm. have to get into it here but it's it's when you strip people of who they are you're gonna they're gonna adopt cultural practices that they come in contact with and it might not necessarily be their own cultural practices but they're gonna adopt cultural practices we've adopted cultural practices and we've been given cultural practices and i'm gonna keep saying it that has created the negro mindset and that is preventing us from being what we need to be in mass there are small pockets of people doing it but even in those small pockets people are still not connecting now yes some people like me this channel exists to help people understand their history but people have to take the information and people have to use the information but I'm I'm still working on reaching a larger group of people. But you know, there's still forces working against us that's that's even more powerful because people love to be entertained and people love all these things, all these other distractions that are really just in the place to help people help themselves not learn more about themselves, not learn more about the history, not learn more about the psychology and everything that has happened to us. Because there are a lot of people who know that something happened to us, but they don't really understand and have broken down of why it happened to us and, and how it affected us. Because look at us today, once again, they took our history from us and now we behave as if, you know, we just, we just came from nothing and we don't. Well, you see it when you talk to people, and this is a conversation that's been had for years, when you see people talking about uh, people that go to school to study black history and get black history majors, right? What's the number one uh, thing I used to hear people say is what I need to study black history for, I'm black. You know, and you hear all kinds of disparaging comments about people that go to school to study black history. You don't hear people saying, what do I need to go to school to major in history for? I'm human right like like you don't hear that that's that mindset though right and that's what i'm saying like that's what it is so is that's just further proof to what he's saying and what you're saying that um there are people out there and when you re we hear this analogy all the time when you remove people from their history um you're removing the roots from the from the tree yeah that's a great analogy it is a, it's a wonderful analogy 
Um, but there is a, a, a type of plant, not really a plant, but type of plant-based organism that doesn't have roots that can sprout anywhere. And that's a fungus or fungi. So do, what I say to that is, okay, <laughs> So if we can't be trees and plants no more because they didn't ripped our roots up, we're gonna be fun guy. Cause we're gonna exist we gonna some way somehow, guy. huh? Right, right. Yeah. We need yeah. to, we need, but for that to happen, every group has to be a self-contained unit. Because a fun guy can sprout anywhere. And 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 if if cultivated correctly, fun guy can become a force in the in the in the area that it's in. It could be either good or bad absolutely and so what we see now with our culture stripped of its roots is that it is becoming a fun guy negatively though like for right. us right but it's, yeah. it's positive for people that are control in control of the economics of our culture and the resources that our culture brings in because our culture is spreading around the world much like and culture is but our culture is spreading around the world and it's been monetized by people that aren't us well yeah and and for the most part the well especially the culture that's spread around the world but for the most part it's negative black american culture specifically yes yes absolutely absolutely right. we don't Let's control do our narratives or anything so yeah 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 right Let's do it There is a link between what someone thinks of themselves, what someone thinks of their people and their history. Now, scholars talk about personal esteem. That means self-esteem. And then you have interpersonal or group esteem, which is what you think of your group or what you think of your race, racial esteem. Self-esteem, and racial esteem are not the same thing. Someone can have very high self-esteem where they think highly of themselves and very low racial esteem where they think very badly of other black people. And in truth, most black people have very high self-esteem and very low racial esteem. And that's one of the reasons why black people are prone to fight each other prone to disagree with each other, prone to conflict with each other, because someone thinks very highly of themselves and someone thinks very lowly of their group. And what- We didn't talk about this before. <laughs> yeah. We didn't talk about this before at length, whether on camera or off camera, we've talked about this before. Individual self-esteem versus group self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And you can look at most black environments and not just the environments, but how black people behave among each other. And you can see that we have very, 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 very low collective self-esteem and a good number of us have low individual self-esteem by the way we behave. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's the only thing I would push back on is I don't think black people individually have high self-esteem either. Well, well, so one thing I thought about when I was, because I, I was, you know, going, I've watched this a couple times and listened to it a couple times. And I'm thinking he may be talking about in London or in the UK, mm. you know, because he is a British historian. So he may be True. talking about the UK, but I, now I don't want to put words in his mouth. But that's the thought that came in my mind because I thought too that, well, in America, I don't think a lot of black people True. have high individual self-esteem. So it may be different in the UK. I don't know. I've never been. Right. But I do know he's a London-based historian. That's a fair point. If he's referencing the UK blacks, I don't know enough about blacks in the UK to comment. Right. But blacks here in America, I don't think we have. Right. I think we got a, a, an abundance of ego. More ego than self-esteem. Not like cause I do I do think there's a good number of us that have um high individual self-esteem, but I don't think there's enough of us to have actual real um high and a, a healthy level of self-esteem. I, I agree with you. I think it's more on the ego and the inflation thing of people out here faking 
pump fake but not necessarily real self-esteem because if if so we would treat ourselves and each other better and the proof is in the actions mm -hmm. so. that's that's exactly where i was going with it <laughs> well i mean bam there it is so let's keep it rolling <laughs> And someone thinks very lowly of their group. And what happens is, if people can call each other the N and the B word, they're really saying, I don't give a monkeys about the black race. They've really just said that their racial esteem is very, very low. But every black person usually has very high personal esteem. So if someone thinks highly of themselves and very lowly of their group, that is a recipe for fighting. That is a recipe for conflict. And the way to raise people's racial esteem is to introduce them to their history. Um, and if the history happens to be a great history, a history that people objectively can be proud of, they will see their people in a very different way to how they see their people at present. And that's... So stop it right there, because I know we got a little bit, but kind of take this chunk so we don't forget what he's saying. So introducing people to their history into introducing people to a knowledge of self specifically a group of people who've been stripped of their history and stripped of their knowledge of self now as a historian of course i believe that we should be introduced to our history and introduced to our knowledge of self but i think history is just a piece of it mm -hmm. um nearly full of junior talks about the nine areas of human activity I think we need to be reintroduced to who we are through the nine areas of human activity. Yes, sex included. Because <laughs> I think we got a lot of deviant behaviors. And I really believe that um, knowledge of self can be looked at as an umbrella, but knowledge of self shouldn't be just one category. Because it's it seems, from my purview, it seems that knowledge of self has meant, you know, specifically only learning history. And I say learning history is a piece of it. You got to learn the psychology of it. You got to learn the economics of it. You got to learn, go through all nine areas of human activity and be reintroduced to how we interacted as a people before slavery. How did African people interact? How did Afri African people exist in these nine areas of human activity before uh, white contact, before even any any colonizers any major colonizers that came and disturbed the way african people existed especially if we're going to say knowledge of self is what we need to be able to resurrect ourselves and change our situation knowledge of self is just a just an umbrella term break it down to nine areas of human activity what you think no i agree with that um i think knowledge itself i'm against all of the cliches that exist <laughs> and the uh, uh pro black black power black nationalism whatever label we want to put on it nowadays movement um because people fall back on the cliches and they lose their meaning there's no depth to the conversation no more i was a couple years ago listening to two very intelligent black people um have a conversation here in charlotte and they were only using cliches <laughs> And it was so amusing to me because neither one of them was saying anything, but they thought they were saying everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and these are very intelligent people. I know that they're smart. Um, but, but they was cliching it up. They was cli like they they hadn't used their intelligence to really think about what those cliches meant. And Cliché that doesn't and mean that stupid, right? That just means they have been groomed and conditioned, indoctrinated to have these conversations these ways and having those conversations those ways don't have there's no substance to the conversation there's no right. meaning to it right so right. i agree with you the human areas of activity are necessary we need to define these terms um and to what he's saying uh here in america the reason i say we have and i think it's, it's critical that if uh we're going to say we disagree with something we lay out the why we disagree the reason I think that it is that black people in America have more ego and then self-esteem is because when you when you look at what self-esteem is, is having confidence in what you can do and knowing your limitations. 
not really needing to be validated, understanding I'm capable of this. I'm not capable of that. I know this information, but I don't know everything about that information. So I can receive new information. I can receive critiques. I can receive all these other things. Um, right. Self-esteem is also uh, being aware of the existence of others and how they exist in relation to you. LeBron right. James is better at basketball than me. Being able to understand that. You know, not just LeBron James. Uh, everybody most people on high school basketball teams are better. Everybody who own a team better than me. I know that. Right. Right. Being able to sit back and know your capabilities, right? Um ego is when everything becomes centered on self, when everything is about you, and when you become the greatest. Or if you, you need to be recognized, you need to be the center of attention, you need to get your respect. Everything becomes about you. And when I look at black people operate in America, I don't see a lot of self-esteem. I see a whole lot of ego. I don't see a lot of awareness about what's going on, our relationship to the world we live in, our relationship to each other, being able to take a back seat to somebody else. I don't see a lot of that. I see a whole lot of, well, what about me? Well, what about yeah. us? Well, what about yeah. this? Well, what about that? Well, I need mine. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get everything. Everything is, is short term. Me. Right. Every, so yeah. that's why I say that. Oh, your picture went out. Yeah, is my sound still there? Yeah, your sound still here. That's, that's I don't know why my picture went out because I'm using my laptop cam. I don't know. We just, there you go. You're back. We're going to keep rolling though. But, but yeah, so yeah, what you said. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. let him let's go ahead and <laughs> let this go. <laughs> it messed us up. Technology. To how they see that people are present. And that's the difference between high self esteem, low racial esteem, to having a balance where you have high self esteem and high racial or ethnic esteem. The purpose of my work generally is to build that psychological balance between high personal esteem and high self-esteem. Yeah, that, that a, a, a balance does need to exist, but I, I think we have to, we got to work on one at a time though right now. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm being real. I, I think I do, because I believe once, individual self-esteem is raised in the proper manner in the, in the proper context in the proper cultural context to to a a desired goal that we've laid out for ourselves because we can't just be raising individual self-esteem on just any whim that could even further divide us because there, there's no point in raising the person's self-esteem if that self-esteem isn't going to lead to helping to raise the the group esteem so it has to be a, a directed end goal for this person's self-esteem to be raised. And the, spe the specific tools that are used are tools that are going to help push this person toward this goal. Because the key word in self-esteem is self. So this is something that's going to help somebody help themselves. And so since the key word in self-esteem is self, that's for the group as well, which means that nobody else is going to help raise our self-esteem. Nobody's going to raise our self-esteem for us but us but we got to make sure we have the proper tools but one thing going back to what you said ego has to be removed everybody can't be the smartest person in the room everybody mm -hmm. can't be the chief gonna have to have some followers everybody can't be a leader and everybody until we get to that point queen. go ahead i'm sorry right. and but uh, um um until we get to that point we're going to continue to be at this at this space of domination, at the space of um, having an inferiority complex as individuals and as a group. And our conditions are going to keep getting worse. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's important to connect people to their roots, to their to their history as best we can. We know a lot of us, you know, slavery did happen. Uh, we don't know where we came from, so it's hard to pinpoint exactly. Uh, but so that's why that's another reason why I go back to the the, the fungi analogy, the fungi analogy. I it, when it's hard for you to pinpoint where you came from, 
it you gets start really, where you at. <laughs> right, right. So we know what we've done here in America. We could trace our lineage back. We know where about general vicinity we came from in Africa. And all that this stuff is important. And I think we still need historians and scholars to continue to dig yeah, into Yeah, everybody that. has a place. Right. Um, but when we start talking about this component of raising collective esteem and uh, self-esteem, um, I agree with you. We we I think we're going to have to seesaw it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you you raise self esteem a little bit, then you raise group esteem a little bit. Then you you know I think I think that's the way we're going to have to do it because um, the way we've seen it work out when people put a lot of emphasis on past, they start to disconnect from present. Right. It has um, to it has to be relevant. The past. Dr. Rashidi I always talked about this, and I said this before. The the history that we teach has to be relevant to today. Right. And, and a lot right. of re, one of the reasons a lot of people are not interested in it is because it's not relevant. The average right. black person don't feel welcome into a lot of these black circles. Right. And 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 I tell I don't blame them because I don't feel <laughs> welcome either. And some of them, and I know I've read a whole lot of books and listened to a lot of lectures and met a lot of people, but I think, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's why I'm a fan of teaching history from the present backwards instead of from the back forward. Um, because it's easier to make those connections. But to, you know, the, the go, I just feel like you got to, I don't feel like I think because I've seen it in action. When you focus on the past, people feel disconnected from the present and they, they lose visual of their current environment that's the space we in right now everybody's yeah. so focused on the past that they're not paying attention to what's happening right now and when you and focus on worse. the present you you lose sight of the things that have happened in the past that you dealt with and had to overcome that you could learn from you got to find a balance like you said right. you got to find a balance so i agree with you i think you know we 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 got to pick one and work on that for a little bit and then once we hit the milestones in that one we got to come back over here to this one i don't know that it's possible to do them both at the same time because i don't think we're just we're not at yeah. that space and i'm i'm not going to say that he meant to say that both need to be done at the same time but you know that's just my the first thought that i came to my head is all right well just thinking about the conditions, our actual conditions that we're in now, we're gonna have to do one at a time. Being realistic, right, right, right. Like, like, I get that. Like, because we we can't we can't be unrealistic about the conditions that Black Americans exist in in America today. We can't be unrealistic. We're doing bad. We we are at the bottom of all lists across the board. All the lists that really matter. Nobody care uh, about you, nobody you care about enrollment on. rates. Okay. What's that? The, you said the list that really matter because I was gonna yeah. say we we at the top of the the uh, fucking list according well, to some people. Well, well, yeah, and twerking, but the list that really matter <laughs> to that affects the the actual quality of our life. We're at the bottom of these lists. Yeah. Right. And so, and we talking about black men and black women together. Right. 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 We're failing together, so we have to get our stuff together we have to do better we have to do different but it do start with the individual start with the self like he's talking about but thinking of taking a thinking different about approaching teaching knowledge of self and don't put knowledge of self into a box of history psychology economics and stuff because i know when i was coming up it seemed like that was it but as i get older as i got older and i started learning more and researching more and, and experiencing more and talking to more people you know your brain expands and once once your thoughts and then your all those things expand you start to have more critical thoughts and knowledge of self as i said earlier should be an umbrella term and then breaking it down to the nine areas of human activity how have how black people have been affected and disconnected from who we are through these nine areas and how can we reconnect us back to who we are through these nine areas of human activity and if we don't look at it through that total lens i think we're cheating ourselves i think we need a new term altogether 
I've already said I I don't like the cliches, but knowledge yeah. itself is a particularly bad one. Um, because how is it knowledge itself and I don't start with me? Like how how do how do how is it knowledge itself? And I'm not asking my mom about her life, my dad about his life, my grandma, my grandpa. How am I not going backwards when I start focusing on knowledge yourself? Why am I starting back there and trying to come forward? That's not knowledge yourself. That's knowledge, knowledge of family. Of them. Yeah, that's that's knowledge of make somebody's roots. I don't even know if they like, and this is just, I know I'm being technical Ted, but this is like really being real about it. Right? Like, I don't know if I'm related to, you know, any of the Egyptian pharaohs or any of the, you know, I don't know if I'm related to those people. So how is studying about them knowledge itself? I, so I think knowledge itself is a, a it it needs to be something else like how are you talking about knowledge yourself and you can't even tell me what you want in the mate you don't know what you don't even know what you like well, well that but that's why that's why i'm talking about because i get where you're going i get where your technical tetanus is taking you <laughs> i get tetanus. it Why <laughs> not? <laughs> but but that's why I'm saying looking at the nine areas of human activity. Right. Looking at it, looking at it from it. a yeah. realistic human human standpoint of how we were really affected and disconnected from who we are and going back and reconnecting these channels. Because if we don't, all right, like there is no knowledge yourself. Because when you go through these nine areas, you're gonna have to deal with deal with your past, your present, and your future. In that order, you got to deal with them. In that, I do agree with that. You got to deal without a past, you have no future, and that's been proven biologically. People that have amnesia struggle with goal setting and future planning, yeah. So they just exist, and for too long, we've just been existing. So, that like the analogy you used, yeah, we've lost our roots, but even like other organic compounds, such as fungi, we can still create and we can, we can thrive where we are we can choose to be positive we can choose to be negative so far not everybody but enough of us have been choosing negativity so those of us who are choosing positivity let's keep choosing positivity and keep rocking together and let's actually rock together like mm -hmm. let's actually rock together mm -hmm. because if we don't we still can't blame nobody else because yes racism happened but it's up to us to fix our situation because ain't nobody else gonna fix it. Nobody else cares that racism happened. We the only one that care that racism happened because it happened to our ancestors. Nobody else cares, but we still got to fix our situation. So let's fix our situation because we're more than capable. That's why we're doing these breakdowns so we can think outside the box and actually use these steps. So let's improve ourselves and let's prove as a collective. Uh, anything else you want to say, my brother? Nah, man, that was a mic drop. I mean, this is a cone, but I'm gonna drop it. There you, there you go, Cone. And uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next time, man. Make sure y'all check out this next video that's coming up. So, peace out.